Okay, folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier. I just saw the 2023 version of The Little Mermaid, uh, and I just found my comb that I'd been looking for earlier today, which I couldn't find, so things are turning up. Uh, so this was a remake. I believe the original was, was it 1989 or 1990 or 1991? I think it was 89 if I had to bet my life on it. Look, I like Disney, fair enough. As many of you know, I did attend Disney uh, during our worldwide situation a few years ago. I took many videos and I made a Disney World playlist, uh, Mike's Disney Adventures. And I know that here in the good old state of Florida, Disney's got quite a little rivalry or a big rivalry with the governor here. So it's very exciting and tenuous at best. Um, Politics aside, you know, I think uh, Disney makes quality films uh, for the most part. Some of them stink. I mean, there was one, uh, I want to say about a year ago at this time, that was a big flop. Um, you know what I mean? But I did like, uh, what's it called? Jungle Cruise with The Rock and, and Emily Blunt. Uh, quite fetching Emily Blunt a few years ago. I liked that one a lot. So what did I think of this one? Well, I did not do... Um, what some might do, I did not go back to the original animation uh, to watch it before I went to see this one. I did see this one in beautiful 3D. I do think it's a movie that if you're gonna go ahead and see it, you might as well see it in 3D on the big screen. Um, another one of these movies that's like two hours and five minutes long or two hours and 15 minutes long. I really do prefer movies that are somewhere between an hour and a half to two hours. I think that's great for a movie. When you start making these epic movies that are two hours and 15, 245, it's come on. So let's get on with it, the review. What did I think? Should you go see it, first of all? I think so, uh, especially if you're a person with children and the kids want to see it. I don't think it's going to screw up their minds to go see this movie. Uh, you'll get a two-hour babysitter or two-and-a-half-hour babysitter. Probably this is a movie that's going to be streamed over and over again for uh, the kids of today. Their parents will be playing this movie over and over again, hearing the songs get stuck in their head. I did see some YouTube videos. Apparently, one of the songs in this new movie uh, is really annoying people. And I'm not, I didn't do the research to see which of those songs it is. I kind of think it's the Scuttlebutt song uh, that's sung by the Bird character. I don't remember all these fucking characters' names. By the way, this is an adult's review uh, by a somewhat of an adult me for you. Uh, this is not going to be a kid-friendly review because I'm going to get into some stuff about this movie just for fun. We, we can discuss these things, can't we? So let's get on with it. Um, first off, you know, I liked the, I did like the movie. Don't get me wrong. It is, I'm not the fucking target audience for this thing. So the target audience is going to lap this up like, uh, you know, like, like basically like baby food. You know, oh, give me my Disney. Give me my Little Mermaid, you know. So that's fine. I'm a little more discerning. But I think for what it is, it's really, it's really well made. Uh, no issues with the movie. But I did see some things that are interesting. <clears throat> I think Disney is a corporation's in a tough spot in this world of, you know, political correctness, not liking, not doing too much, not doing too little. What the fuck? You can't win. No matter what you do, uh, you're going to get in the crosshairs of somebody saying you're too woke, not woke enough too politically correct, too politically incorrect. Someone's always going to bust your fucking balls no matter where you, what you fucking do. So I have empathy for this billion dollar corporation, but let's get on with it. First off, um, you know, and, and look, don't hashtag me into oblivion. If I just point out some things that I noticed, I'm not trying to make issues where there's not these are just the thoughts that cross my mind and I'm sharing them if, if I'm fucked up in the head so be it uh the first thing <laughs> I kind of notice is we meet uh, Titan by Javier Badim who I thought was okay but I think he had kind of a stilted one in performance and I know that these actors have a challenge because they're probably performing their scenes in a vacuum on some type of sound stage or green screen they don't have all these fucking elements, but Melissa McCarthy, in contrast, as the sea witch, you know, his sister was just so much fun. 
And Javier, I guess that was just supposed to be the character of this kind of stoic, stick-in-the-mud father, but it just kind of bored me. I mean, he could have been played by anybody, uh, but it was played by him. And I get it, he's, he's working with animations that aren't even there and so forth. So I understand it's, it's just, but I just didn't get much from his interpretation of, of uh, Titan the father. But we start off and we meet all of Titan's daughters and it's like a Benetton watch ad from the 1980s. Every color of the rainbow, which is fine. But, you know, as, as soon as we... And the first daughter's name is Tamina. And then all the other daughters have some type of, you know, uh, specific ethnicity name. And then, of course, you know, <laughs> he has to look around and call out each daughter's name and look. And then he sees, like, the lily pad or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, that's supposed to have Ariel, and she's not there. Now, uh, sorry, but a normal human being, and I know he's not a human being, but you'd look around first, you'd see that there's a missing fucking lily pad, and you'd say, hey, where the fuck is Ariel? But no, he has to read off Tamina, this one, that one, this one. Oh, shit, there's someone missing. Just stupid, just stupid film stuff. Of course, of course, the fucking characters who live under the ocean speak American English, right? Just a happy coincidence. They don't go, kah, 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 kah. they don't have fucking dolphin language. They have human being language under the sea, right? But it's a movie. I get it. Uh, so then we have, you know, Ariel is basically, we get this whole kind of thing in this movie. You know, Ariel wants to get fucked. I mean, that's just really what it comes down to. Uh, her chastity belt uh, on her fucking mermaid fin is really tight by her overprotective father. He, he, even though he's got seven daughters, oh, here's the thing. Do we realize that these seven daughters must have seven different mothers? I mean, Titan must be spreading his seed all over the ocean because he's got an Asian daughter. He's, he's got a, you know, a, a Tamina, he's African-American, or, or I don't know what to say, but they're all the shades of the fucking rainbow. So he must be going around to all the seven seas, dropping a load uh, everywhere. But where are all the mothers? Uh, you know what I mean? Now you could say, well, this is uh, the fucking sea world, and uh, you know the, the mer women come out different colors. Uh, it doesn't matter. They don't play by our fucking rigid you know, societal norms of what makes sense. Okay, fine. I don't give a fuck. But it was just funny to me because I'm thinking, okay, well, Titan's out there fucking around. He's got all these, you know, seven women pregnant. He knocked them all up. or these seven mer women pregnant? He's brought all his daughters home. Where are the mothers? They don't have any custody rights to these daughters. And also, all these mer daughters are just, they're all like basically old hens now, I guess. You know what I mean? Uh, they're all hens because they're sitting there and, uh, you know, none of them are fucking doing anything you know so it's just interesting to me just interesting god damn it i have to check that the fucking audio is all fucked up uh i gotta check the settings which i can't do right now so hopefully we're hearing the fucking audio otherwise this is all for naught uh but any goddamn way uh all the characters are seeking approval uh from men hold on god fuck Okay, folks, part fucking two of my Little Mermaid review uh, just upsets me because why did I have to stop the video process? Process? It's because I was uh, concerned that my fucking Bluetooth button was on. And when the Bluetooth button is on and the headphones happen to be in circulation, then all the audio might be feeding into that fucking thing. Uh, and you're not getting my full proper audio. And that fucked me in the ass the other day when I did the goddamn wrestling thing. I, I spoke for 25 minutes and then I fucking broadcast the video and it didn't play properly with the audio. So I'm very upset that I have to fucking break this video up into two parts. It's going to lose its goddamn gusto, but any fucking goddamn way. Okay, so now with fucking whatever the fuck, Sebastian. I mean, Sebastian is the fucking Jar Jar Binks of the sea. I mean, is it just, a, is it just, I mean, I wonder in in Jamaica, if they want to have a goofy character, they do they give them an American accent? I mean, it just seems like such a go-to thing for uh, American films. Oh, you have a goofy sidekick, give him a fucking, 
a Caribbean accent or, or a Jamaican accent or whatever the fuck. I just, how did that come to be? You know, that we just have these characters. And then you say, well, representation. I mean, fuck, Sebastian's got to be something. He can't just be an ordinary white crab. He's got to be a fucking Jamaican. Okay, why? I don't know. But he fucking is. Um, whatever the fuck. Um, oh, yes. Very simple film fucking trick. Save the Cat, Blake Snyder, the book for the screenwriters out there. It didn't take him fucking long to deliver a save the cat moment. In this case, it was save the dog. Both Eric literally saves the fucking dog off the burning ship. And then I'm sitting there like, oh, well, isn't Ariel the hero of this movie? Isn't she supposed to save the dog? And then right when I'm thinking that, Ariel helps the, the dog, Max, swim up to the rescue boat. If you don't know what that concept is, look it up. Save the cat. In this case, save the dog. We know who our good guys are. What's the plot of this movie? Like, what's what's the mission? I think it's just for these two characters to fuck. You know what I mean? If you really, if you take away all the fucking fairy tale bullshit, it's just for these two characters to hook up, for this chastity belt to be removed, and for fucking uh, Ariel to get her groove on. I mean, am I wrong? Uh, what the fuck? And and here's the other goddamn thing. It's like um, Ariel, as great as fucking she is, her whole quest in this movie is to get kissed by a man. You know what I mean? It's not that she's gonna fucking cure a pollution in the ocean or she's gonna do anything like that. It's no, she just has to get uh, kissed, which is a euphemism for fucked. You know, if this was an adult film. Uh, also, come on, if we're dealing with reality here, this is how you know it's a fucking fairy tale. Uh, Ariel, you know, basically the sea witch makes her a woman. She gets, you know, brought up on the fucking boat in a net i'm assuming she's nude she's naked and the lonely fucking fisherman who's out there on the fucking lonely seas you know with no signs of a woman a wife a girlfriend anything he gets this beautiful young woman <laughs> naked in a fucking net and his instinct is to see if she's okay and then get her something to cover up you've never fucking met a fisherman before have you okay i mean christ i mean that's just fiction uh, any self-respecting fisherman would not just, oh, I need to cover up this naked young woman. Yeah, okay. Fiction. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? Oh, okay. Uh, towards the end of the movie, we see Titan kind of... Uh, actually, we see Ariel first getting kind of her arms stretched out by the sea witches, the sea hags. I thought Melissa McCarthy was really good as the sea witch. Um, the, the electric eels are kind of pulling Ariel's fucking arms apart. And uh, it's a Christ, it's a Christ metaphor because her arms are being stretched out like Jesus Christ. So Ariel is the Christ figure and then daddy comes along. All these movies I've been seeing lately, this one, The Machine, where these people are killing their family members. What's going on with this world? But basically, um, dad, you know, Javier, the stiff uh, Bardim, as Titan sacrifices his own life for his daughter, and then he gets all Christed out, like the fucking electric eels Christ him out, and then they kill him, or so we think. Um, what else? Oh yes, this whole goddamn movie apparently is just about species dysphoria. You know, like um, this poor mer woman, she's actually, you know, she needs fucking species of, 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 of affirming care because she's really a human, but she's trapped in the body of a fucking merwoman, a mermaid. So she has to get all this witch doctory shit to help her become a, a merwoman. So there's that, you know, species dysphoria. Uh, in the in the world of this movie, there's this con. I mean, similar to fucking Avatar, similar to fucking everything. There's this conflict uh, between the under the water people and the, the the above the ground people, us, I guess. So that's just part of this fucking movie. Um, let's see. I, I have all these wonderful notes. You know, I, I mean, I thought Haley Bailey, interesting name, because you always want to say, you know, if you're of a certain age, you always want to see Halle Berry, but it's Haley Bailey. I haven't seen her before. I've followed a little bit of this controversy, this poor young actress. She just wants to fucking be in a movie. Give her a break. I thought she did fine. 
people who get all wrapped up about the ethnicity of these these actors, it's just a fucking movie. And furthermore, she's not playing a historical character. If she was playing Martha Washington or something like that, we might have a story. But she's playing a fucking mermaid from a goddamn uh, fictional script, you idiots. So, I mean, fuck, give her a break. Uh, but, of course, they have to dye her hair red. I mean, I don't know. I thought she did f f pretty damn good, to be honest with you. Um, I thought she was charming and nice and all that shit, and I, I thought that she did did very well. The Eric guy was your typical, you know, Disney cookie-cutter prince, you know, the, the nice hair, the fucking whatever the fuck, 145 pounds, 5 foot 10. They all look the goddamn same to me. So I thought it was fine. I mean, I had no issues with them. But I do think it's interesting because, like I said, Disney's walking this fucking line where they, they, they're trying to satisfy as many fucking people as possible. And um, like I said, they have the multi-ethnic ethnical daughters of the sea. Who's their mommy? Who the fuck knows? Or their mommies? Um, and then you got, like, Eric, you know, is appears to be Caucasian. Let's put it that way. And then... Uh, we meet his mom, and his mom appears to not be so Caucasian. She appears to be, I don't know what you say now, uh, black, African-American. I don't know what term to use anymore. I don't fucking know. Maybe we shouldn't even use terms. And this is getting me to my point. Why not just have what they call in the theater world blind casting? You know what I mean? Like, why does she have, because, spoiler, Eric is adopted, right? Why does he have to be adopted? Someone's calling me, interrupting my goddamn video. Uh, so it's like, why does Eric have to be adopted? Why can't he just be her son? And I get it. It's, it's part of the fucking Romeo and Juliet, I guess, that he doesn't fully belong. Uh, Ariel doesn't fully belong. But if you're going to do, like, the blind casting, which I'm really not a, a, a opposed to, just go all the way with it. You know what I mean? But once again, uh, you know, like I said, you can't win. I mean, Disney can't win. Nobody can win. Because no matter what you do, it's a hashtag. It's a cancel culture. It's a fuck in the ass. But I thought the, the movie was pretty good. Um, like I said, I, I phased out. There was like a scene with goats or some such thing. I had to check my phone. I got a little bit of itchy finger. I was in there for two and a half hours. It was prime time, middle of the day. I had other things on my mind. So did I fully focus in, you know, for 125 minutes of this thing? No. I phased out a little bit. Like I said, this movie's not made for me. Uh, I'm not in the fucking target audience for this thing. I will say this, as someone who goes to the movies all the time, uh, I'm seeing this on a Wednesday afternoon, uh, and I've noticed that... Um, is today Wednesday or Thursday? I don't, I don't even fucking know. But I've noticed that the audiences have been coming out for this thing. Because whenever there's like a big movie, you can kind of tell if there's a lot of people coming to the theater, if that movie is going to be really successful or just moderately successful. I think this is going to be a big hit. I'm sure it is already. You don't need my fucking insight to tell you that. So that's it, folks. Uh, this has been your Mike's Instant Movie Review Part 2. Uh, I wish I didn't have to break up the video. If you stuck around for the first one, you came back. Very good. All my uh, fucking Mike's Instant Movie Reviews are now on this channel. Somebody's honking an appreciation. One Mike Messier YouTube channel. You want to see my fucking movies that are a little bit more intelligent than some of this stuff in the theaters these days, uh, go to One Man in a Camera Films. Uh, if you like pro wrestling by any chance and or sports, you can go to One Pro Wrestling uh, and Sports Fan channel. I'm going to comb my hair now, which I wish I had done this morning. And uh, I want to wrap up the review. So that's it. Uh, overall, good job, everybody. Great movie. Blah, blah, blah. See you in another 30 years for another remake.